Today I will talk about the angular stability of the power system. It is related to the torque which can be applied to the generator while still staying synchronized. Or in other words, can the mechanical power provided by the mechanical drive of the generator stay in balance with the real electrical power which can be evacuated to the grid under all circumstances? This is probably the most tricky criteria to be met, and especially when there are long lines and intercon AC interconnections, keeping the system angular stable is quite a challenge as we will see. Again, the power system stability is based on three distinct pillars which have to be always met and which are also interrelated. When a synchronous generator applies real power to the system, a mechanical torque has to be applied to the shaft of the generator. This mechanical torque is provided by an engine connected to the shaft. The engine could, for example, be a turbo motor, a hydraulic turbine, or a gas turbine. As soon as the generator supplies real power to the network, there will be an angle between the ro rotating magnetic field in, of the stator of the generator and the DC magnetic field of the rotor. And this angle is proportional to the torque which is applied by the motor connected to the shaft of the generator. In order to explain this angle, there is just a mechanical analogy to the, the angle. Think about the horse and uh, behind the horse you would have a load, a weight connected by a spring and the heavier the load will be, the longer the spring will be. And in my further explanations and models, I will integrate the generator impedance into the line impedance for simplicity reason. If you push power through a long line from a power station to a load or even to an infinite bus, it could be a relatively complex power system on this side, you will notice that there is a phase angle between the receiving end of the line and the sending end of the line. You would also see that the power transmitted is a function of the phase angle between the line ends. This function is a sinus curve, a half cycled sinus curve. So you would start with zero power at the angle zero between the phases of the line end. The maximum power would be provided when the phase angle is on 90 degrees and later on it would decrease again until it reaches 180 degrees. If you would now start the experiment, starting at a phaser angle difference of zero, and you start to increase power, so you would start to increase the torque on the motor, you would notice that then the power would increase. At the same time, the, tor the torque would increase the phase angle between the two line ends. You would see how the power would increase. You would continue until you reach the maximum power at the tipping point and if you pass this tipping point you are now in an area where the whole system starts to be unstable and in fact it would then start to collapse. Let's now quickly go to the simulator and build up such a, a model. So what you see now if you run the model is that uh, if you shift up the shifter here, you increase the power, the mechanical power input into the generator means it's the torque. By the way, the power is the red line. You see power output, power input. And what you can observe is two things. First of all, the voltage at both line ends, you can see it here. And the more you shift up the power input, the mechanical power input into the generator on one line end, the larger the angle between the phaser at both line ends will be. So this is one line end, that is the other line end. So this is exactly the effect we would like to discuss because this has some uh, complications and some ramifications. The whole thing is, the whole story is that you can not increase too much the phase angle between the ends of a line without risking the system to collapse. 
The problem is acute with uh, very long AC lines. In reality, you will try to keep the phase angle as far away from 90 degrees as possible in order to be able to cope with uh, system changes in the grid. So, for example, you may be losing a line. So let's assume that uh, you have now to evacuate a certain power from the generator to the grid through a transmission line. So you apply a certain torque on the machine and now for whatever reason you suddenly need more power. That means you need to, to get a new set point for the generator so you would increase the torque. So you would come to a new equilibrium. But since this is a transition phase, uh, the machine would be accelerated uh, briefly and then there would be an oscillation around the new set point before it goes back to the new set point, to the new equilibrium. And this, is, this, uh, this oscillation is very critical. If, however, the power, the mechanical torque on the generator is exceeding the stability limit, meaning it's exceeding 90 degrees, then look at what happens. So I increase the power, I increase the power, I approach 90 degrees, and now I lose the stability. You see how the generator speed is accelerating uncontrolled. That's the principle I was explaining. The system can be step, kept stable only if the triangles between the original set point and the maximum amplitude of the oscillation down to the new equilibrium, if these two blue triangles can have the same surface. Otherwise, the system will leave the stable condition. The function of this curve I have shown before uh, is as follows. So the power is equal to the square of the voltage at both line ends maximum voltage divided by the impedance of the circuit times sinus theta and this is this angle we were talking about so remember the picture i was showing before maybe this helps so the spring should not get longer than these 90 degrees otherwise it may collapse so the conclusion we can draw so far out of this uh, simple equation here is first of all <coughs> The maximum power you can transmit is somehow proportional to the impedance. In this case, you have uh, two lines in parallel between the system A, the generator, and the load system B. The second thing is that uh, this equation also is uh, related to the number of lines in parallel. You see, for example, that the impedance, this X, is uh, equal to the parallel connection of these two impedance here. So if you have two parallel lines, you can transmit double the power than if you have only one uh, connection. The third thing we can conclude, we know already, is that the transmitted power is proportional to the square of the voltage. That explains also why uh, you can transmit more power with increasing voltage. This is exactly related to this equation here. Let's now make an example. We would have now have this uh, power generation plant. We have two long lines in parallel. And then we have an infinite bus at the load end. There would be now a torque applied to the generation on the left side of the, of the system. And this torque would lead to uh, power transmitted through the, through the lines and there would be a phase angle an, an angle established uh, in the in the the, the rotor angle would be established accordingly now for one for whatever reason we would lose one of the two parallel lines and then the curve would suddenly look as follows so you see that based on this curve we cannot transmit anymore the full power so what would now happen is that this first original equilibrium we had with a certain phase angle uh, would uh, be reduced. So I could not anymore transmit the full power, maybe only half of it. And therefore, since I still would apply the full torque, I cannot change the torque of the machine very quickly. There would still be the full torque applied to this generator. Therefore, the new equilibrium, the phase angle would move up the curve 
and I would now have this first blue triangle I was talking about before. But now to the, to the acceleration of the generator. Uh, the generator phase angle, the generator angle would continue to grow, it would start to oscillate. But now we would also see that the new triangle above the new equilibrium would not be large enough anymore. It would be much smaller than the original triangle and therefore the whole system would lose synchronism and it would collapse. So here you see now the relation, uh, how these two triangles come into play. So we have originally selected a set point which was much too high. So the original angle was much too high for two lines in parallel because we have always to consider the risk of losing one of the parallel lines. So I will now expand the model so that I can simulate the two parallel lines. Since I have now two parallel lines from one line end to the other line end, I can push uh, double the power through the same line, through the line system. And let's see what happens now if I lose one of the lines. So first I push the power to the maximum. And you can see that the phase angle between the line ends are still with below, well below 90 degrees. But now let's see if I lose now one of the line because of a lightning stroke or whatever. Let's see what happens. You see, I immediately lose the synchronism. This is a typical problem transmission operators have in large systems. For example, if uh, there should be power transmitted from the north of Germany, wind power from the north of Germany to the south of Germany, or even to Switzerland or Italy, or if uh, power generated in the eastern part of Turkey should be transmitted uh, to middle of Europe, so then you have very, very long lines of several thousand kilometers where this issue starts to play. And the point is that in order to keep the system stable under all circumstances, we can either increase the number of lines in parallel or we can reduce the power to be transmitted or there is another trick. What you can do is artificially reduce the apparent length of the line by adding some series capacitors to the system. So if you add series capacitors to the system, you will see that you decrease the phase angle between the sending and the receiving end. So this is without capacitors. Observe the, the phase angle. And this is with capacitors. So here you can clearly see the impact such as series capacitors have. And in fact, these long line connections, they mostly have such kind of series capacitors or other we call it today flexible AC transmission systems facts or whatever. I will now again change the model so that I can show you the impact of the series capacitor. So here is now my model running already. I just needed to add a resistor in series so to damp the transients. So you can see now I have subdivided the lines, the line in two parts, and in the middle I have added a series capacitor and a breaker which is <coughs> switching in or out the capacitor. And you see that you have a large phase angle between the sending and the receiving end. And now I switch in the capacitor, so I open the breaker. And what you can see now is how much <coughs> this uh, angle between the sending end and the receiving end has been decreased. This is how you basically decrease the apparent length of a line by introducing a series capacitor. As usual, you can play around with my simulator in order to get the feeling and to really learn how this whole system interplays.